Thanksgiving. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. you look good. Neighbor. Today's sermon, Today's sermon. Might, be might be long. Don't go to sleep. Because pastor, pastor call you out. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. So it is still Thanksgiving. Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Thessalonians. Uh, he wrote it to the people in Thessalonica and to believers all over the known world. This letter was written around 51 AD while Paul was in Corinth. The church at Thessalonica was like this church here. It was a young church. It was a vibrant church. And this letter was written to strengthen their faith and their understanding of the church, which is the body of Christ. The major theme of the book was to correct the church concerning the second coming of Jesus Christ. Some in the church believed he would come immediately instead of on his time. And this thinking had many people becoming lazy in their service and their thanksgiving to God. Same thing today. Don't everybody say amen at once. Amen. Uh, this past Thursday was what we call Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm sure many of us had opportunities to share meals with our families. We had some potato pies. Amen, somebody. We had some turkeys, fried, baked, boiled, whatever you did. So we had some dressings, cornbread, stovetop, uh, uh, jiffy mix. You had all types of things this Thursday. Most of us ate too much. Amen. amen. Went to bed hurt because we ate too much. And then some of us woke up the next day still thankful, running over from Thanksgiving on Friday. We woke up, we cut that little turkey that we had, made a sandwich. I even put some flour on my seasoned up and fried it. Amen. Don't knock it till you try it. It's good, I'm telling you, you just take it, you just cut it up a little bit, put a little water on it so the season is thick. Then you roll it around in some flour, make sure the grease is hot, pop it in. Oh! Got a whole nother meal. It is still Thanksgiving. The day Thanksgiving was set aside for the pilgrims who were in Plymouth. The pilgrims thought they were going to starve to death. But then the native inhabitants of the country, those who owned it in the first place, amen, they came along, helped them out. They were able to eat, not perish, not die, and they were thankful for the great feast. The pilgrims were grateful to God that they would live, that their needs had been met, and for them, this was a period, not just one day, but it was a period of thanksgiving. In our scriptures, I want you to read the whole chapter, but in our scriptures, as we lead up to the 16th verse, Paul was explaining that we should have a spirit of thanksgiving. A thanksgiving uh, knowing that Christ will return, that his return is sure. Now, although we don't know in the building when he will return, uh, but until he does, we need to remain faithful. We need to remain thankful in our fellowship to the Lord. As we arrive, as we walk up to the 16th verse, it says rejoice evermore. Paul is saying, although Christ hasn't returned yet, continually rejoice and give thanks. Christ came, how many of you know, to remove misery, the misery that was caused by separation in our fellowship with God. How many know that uh, misery has been replaced with hope? It's been replaced with joy. It's been replaced with peace. Amen, somebody. It's been replaced with deliverance. Amen. Then when you look at the 17th verse, it says, uh, pray without ceasing. That's a problem that we have sometimes today. Uh, the Bible says that man ought to always pray. How many of you know that without God, we can do nothing and that we should pray about all things that we face, not just some things, but everything that we face? How many of you know that prayer is a direct line to the Father? Yes, he knows your situation. He knows mine. He knows Brother Avery's. He knows everyone in the building's need. But we need to talk to him in all things. We need to pray just to make it today. As we pull up, as we park into the 18th verse, uh, it says, In everything uh, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We ought to give thanks in any situation, no matter what it might be. You might have lost your job. You might be broke as a joke. Your money might be funny. Your change might be strange. Your credit might not get it. But guess what? In everything, you ought to give thanks. 
Job said, Yea, though he slayed me, yet will I trust in him. We need to, as a body, understand that no matter our situation, God can change it. God can work it out. God can fix it. He can turn it around. We have to be obedient. We have to be.